Writing a literature review can take you a weekend or a whole month. And there's a very clear strategy and eight steps that I always use when I want to write in a sixth of the time. So this means writing really quickly, cutting out unnecessary steps and being really efficient in your research process and in your writing and editing. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel and keep on watching to get into the video. Step one is to have really clear objectives and to define your keywords. Now the biggest mistake people make is that they have their research question and they want to answer it and they want to start writing and searching for literature, but they're so broad in their understanding of what the topic actually is. And what that does is when you're searching for literature, when you're trying to find the best research papers and the best information and evidence to use in your essay, you're struggling because you haven't clearly defined and narrowed down what your literature review will actually be about. Just thinking about what are my keywords, what is the specific question that I want to answer, what are the boundaries of this research, and just having that real focus before you even dive into searching. The more focused your review is and your question is, the faster you can actually search and write. The second thing you want to do is use a systematic approach when you're actually searching for literature. So you can use something like Google Scholar or PubMed and have a really clear, like I said to you earlier, keywords that you're just going to keep on plugging in again and again. And what you're able to do here is just very clearly accumulate maybe 10 really strong research papers and you've really used a very clear approach to accumulating those papers. If you don't have a clear systematic approach to gaining those papers, you'll spend ages, you'll spend almost a couple of weeks just searching for papers, trying to find things that are appropriate, reading literature that's unnecessary and wasting lots of time just because you didn't define what your keywords are and define the boundaries of how you want to actually collect your research. Now, step three, and this is one I've spoken about tons before, do not to read entire papers. So you want to skim through the abstract, skim through the results, and kind of try to read as quickly as possible. Now, imagine you have 10 papers. One paper takes you one whole day to read and understand. That's two weeks almost spent just reading papers. That's a lot of time. So for this tip, I'd recommend using AI tools like Unriddle. Unriddle is an AI tool that helps you to read, write, and find papers really quickly. You're able to use the AI assistant to find and understand information in any document or videos in absolutely seconds. Unriddle is a game changer for anyone that's involved in research. This AI tool streamlines your workflow and allows you to write papers faster and more efficiently. So this is a paper that I have opened up and you can see that I have have 26 pages, it's quite long, it's going to take me absolutely ages to try to read and understand it. So I've, what I've done is I've uploaded it in Unriddle. You can use the automatic prompts like creating a study guide or giving me some quick uh, questions that help you with exams if that's something that you're going to be using it for. What I said was, can you explain the main findings of this paper? And this is just going to give me a quick summary of what the main results are um, and the main outcomes are of this research paper. And what this can do is, it can firstly help you determine whether or not this is a research paper that you actually want to read um, or include in your literature review. And then secondly, if you decide, yes, you want to try to include it in your literature review, it's given you a really clear summary of what it is that you could speak about. Um, and it's helped you to understand academic writing a lot quicker. And I've also asked about what are some proposed future work based on this research. And again, you can see that there are some very clear um, answers that have been pulled out to me by Unriddle. And this is the kind of thing that would have taken me, honestly, days and I've managed to do it on Unriddle in seconds. Now that you've read all the papers and you've got a good understanding of the abstract and the results and sort of the key messages that are told within your research papers, the fourth step is to focus on key themes and theories. Now, a lot of people don't do this. They can try to think about how to categorize their literature based on maybe a few of the results that they've pulled out from the papers, but it really helps if you can determine some key themes because then you can base your paragraphs and your discussion points around those key themes. So what I want to do first is I want to skim through all of the literature and my library. So I've asked on the main workspace, I've said, do I have any papers that discuss low coffee concentrations? Because I'm not sure. I've downloaded a few papers, I've saved a few, but I want to pull out papers that only have to do with low coffee. I've got a direct answer, supporting evidence, and even the link to the evidence is there in the numbers. So you can see like there's one, two, three from the sources that are only from my library. So then I can say, okay, I can now go and click on that 
and read it in more depth. Or now I can go ahead and say, okay, this is going to be part of that category and this research paper will be part of the other category. So it's a really quick and easy way to just help you categorize a little bit. Another really cool thing that Unriddle allows you to do is to group papers within one like folder. So here I have this group called Coffee and Lifestyle and within this group I have four research papers. And so I can ask questions about this group. So I said, what are some common themes within this group? I'm going to get a very clear answer based on only the four research papers that are given to me and you can really clearly see that it's pulling out not only the thematic groups but also some points within and the reference to show you which paper or where it's been taken from. And the next thing I said was I'm writing a literature review, what are some themes, like I just want three, they've given me seven, I just want three main themes that I can discuss about acute and chronic effects, the mechanisms, and population responses. I think this is just really, like it's just made the whole process of getting a good structure for my literature review really easy. Another really cool feature is this graph feature which is in the top left hand corner and what it does is it presents all your research papers and your literature and any anything that you have within your workspace and your library within a one nice graph. So it helps you to maybe link things together that you might not have thought linked together or bring ideas together and show you some sort of pattern. If you have your whole library here of research papers, you can very easily say, this is a bunch or a group that are linked together. This is linked together, that's linked together. And the more paper and the more like research you have there, the better this would be. Number five is to use citation tools to help you with not only collating your library, but also citing within your written text. So with Unriddle, you can open a new note, which is essentially a blank document that allows you to write whatever it is that you want to. So what I've included is this title, so I'm writing about the role of IQGAP1 proteins. Now you have two options, you can either just write for yourself, or you can type a double plus, and it starts to write something for you. Now. With this information that's written, as you can see, it's an amazing piece of text. I would not recommend copying and pasting what's been written for you directly into your literature review, of course, because that's not ethical. But what I would recommend is taking a look at it and taking this as a good example of structure and a good example of how things are written in an academic in academic language. So you can really see the structure, you can see how it flows, you can see like how they use linker sentences and linker words between different paragraphs, and this can all be used to help you write your own. Now, let's say you did write this yourself, there are some things that you can do. So you can highlight sentences and you can say, ask questions about it. You can also select text and do things like improve, expand, shorten, paraphrase, but what we're gonna look at now is finding citations. So this can find citations from online sources, so that's online databases, or your library. So I don't have anything about this in my library. As you can see, there are no papers that come up. This paper is available online, so I've said to cite it, and I've also then added it to the end of my paper, which you'll see at the bottom in the bibliography, and it adds it in a style which you can use as part of your reference list. And even if you don't like that style, you can very easily um, change the format of your citations, and it will automatically change your reference list for you as well, which is great. Step six is to always write in segments. So don't just write randomly, write the introduction first, then write the main body and then write the end. The introduction should have a brief outline to your purpose and your research question. And then the middle should be an organization of the themes and the, the the theory that we spoke about earlier. And the end should be a very quick conclusion and summary of everything that you have discussed within the review. And you need to make sure that you're also highlighting gaps in the literature, which is the whole point of a literature review, so don't forget to do that. The seventh tip is don't get bogged down by excessive detail. You need to synthesize the information, not just summarize. A lot of people get bogged down by trying to write all the details, trying to write the methods, the approach, the results, the issues, the limitations, and you end up just spending so long on something that you could have just synthesized and kind of used a few papers to bring together into one paragraph. Instead of doing that, you're spending so long writing about one paper one method, one research um, outcome. So don't think too much about the detail in every paper, but instead think about how can I critically discuss these research papers in a way that will make for a very strong discussion about X topic. And step number eight, and my biggest tip would be to stay on track 
with your time limit. If you want to give yourself two days to write a literature review, you absolutely can, but that means that you're spending just one hour searching for literature, two hours looking and analyzing and trying to read the literature, one hour then maybe planning and organizing, and then the rest of the time just writing and editing, which I think is more than enough time. But all of this needs to be planned in advance, otherwise it's very easy to lose track and overflow in time. I hope that you found this video helpful and that it helped you write quicker using AI tools like Unriddle. And if you'd like to try Unriddle, then I'll leave a link for it down below so you can go directly and try it out for yourself. I've spoken about the platform a lot before. If you have any questions, then let me know as always, and I hope to see you in the next one. Okay, bye.